All right, welcome into the original Gangsters podcast. Another quick hitter edition. I am your host, Scott Bernstein. Uh, today, we're going to talk about breaking news out of Providence. Uh, we were the first ones to report that uh, Providence mob soldier, a uh, Providence mob rat, uh, Joe DeLuca passed away at age 83. Um, he passed away uh, uh, a couple days ago. And he will be laid out uh, at a funeral home on Branch Avenue Monday. And I believe the funeral uh, will be uh, around that time. And there's a lot of talk right now about whether or not his brother, Robert Bobby the Cigar DeLuca, uh, who is in witness protection right now, who, along with his brother, were the star witnesses at the 2018 murder trial of Cadillac Frank Salemi. Uh, Bobby the Cigar's, uh, you know, best friend. And uh, it was, you know, his eyes and ears in the Providence area. Uh, Cadillac Frank was from Boston. And there's a lot of speculation and worry on, on the part of law enforcement that, Bobby DeLuca is going to come back into town uh, to attend his older brother's wake and funeral. Uh, Tim White over at WPRI uh, reported that he has been told that the state police and the FBI in Rhode Island um, will be on Full alert will have a very noticeable presence uh, at the wake and funeral um, in either anticipation or in case uh, Bobby DeLuca is there. Uh, him coming back to town after testifying against a lot of his former friends. Uh, well, I shouldn't say test helping build cases against them, testifying against Cadillac Frank. Um, doesn't have a lot of friends left outside of his family in Providence. I was told by a series of very solid sources that one of the reasons this speculation about Bobby DeLuca coming back in to Providence is buzzing around, whether it be on the street or within law enforcement circles, is that back in 2021, less than um, or about two years ago, you had a situation where one of Bobby DeLuca's best friends, Richard Barone, uh, wasn't a wise guy, legitimate um, contractor uh, and, uh, and antique dealer. He passed away in 2021, and according to my sources, Bobby DeLuca snuck back into town and attended his funeral in Wake and then snuck back out. Um, it, you know, if, if he decides to do it again, it's definitely going to be interpreted as a message to guys like Baby Shaq's Minocchio, who, granted, he's retired in his 90s right now, but uh, Big Cheese Denunzio. Who, who's the running the show in Boston right now? Uh, Eddie Lato, who's running the show in Providence right now. Um, guys that he cooperated against and and wired up against, uh, or wired up uh, and, and recorded conversations with, uh, are 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 going to interpret it as as a you know a fuck you or a, you know what are you going to do about it. Um, I'll say that, you know, in this day and age in the mafia, we're not we're not at a point where, where there are a lot of bodies dropping. I don't suspect there's a good chance that that Bobby DeLuca will be hurt um, if he decides to come back. But it it, it just uh, it, it seems very risky. Um, and I understand it's your brother. 
Uh, they were very close, but uh, I, I, if I was advising Bobby DeLuca, I, I would probably tell him to to mourn uh, uh, from a distance. But uh, you know, Bobby's his own man, and uh, I know there, you know, I don't think he's afraid of of, of these guys. Uh, you know, Baby Shacks is in his nineties. I don't know how afraid he could be of him. Um, although you know, <laughs> a phone call or or uh, uh, you know, a nod of a head for someone like Baby Shacks can, can get stuff done, even though he's retired. Uh, but you know, Eddie Lato was you know was partners with Bobby you know for years. Uh, they ran uh, gambling and and loan sharking, extortion rackets uh, out of strip clubs, and um, you know Eddie had to go do uh, a, a nice chunk of time through the 2010s uh, because of Bobby DeLuca's cooperation. Bobby DeLuca uh, started cooperating before he actually wired up, uh, and then disappeared into witness protection in 2011, but reemerged five years ago when uh, Cadillac Frank was indicted for a cold case murder. And let's kind of finish off this episode talking about the gangland, the 1993 gangland homicide of Stephen DeSaro. Stevie DeSaro was a, a, a Providence native nightclub owner uh, and, and business partner of Cadillac Frank Salemi. And they owned a, uh, uh, a rock club in South Boston together uh, that was called The Channel. It was a very famous, iconic rock club that by the time Salemi and DeSaro took it over in the early 90s, had fallen on hard times. Uh, they had it up as a rock rock and roll venue for a while. Then they changed concepts and it became a, a strip club. It was, it, was, uh, it, it was on its last legs and part of that the reason why was because Salemi and, and his crew were, were robbing the place uh, and, and DeSaro was getting stuck with a lot of the bills and he was maybe robbing the place too, or that's what the Salemis uh, believed. Uh, they also thought he was cooperating um, and they lured him, a uh, Cadillac Frank and his son, Frankie boy, uh, lured him to a, uh, the Salemi family house in Sharon, Massachusetts, a uh, very quaint, modest uh, 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 house in, in the suburbs. And uh, it was the day after Mother's Day, 1993, May 10th, 93. That morning, they lured him there and Frankie Boy uh, strangled Stevie DeSaro to death as his dad watched on. At that point, they bring in the DeLuca brothers. And uh, Joe DeLuca at that point was a, a mob associate. Bobby DeLuca at that point was a, a mob uh, capo, uh, something that was called a Kingsman capo, uh, where you know he just reported to Salemi. He didn't have to report to anybody in Rhode Island. Uh, but Joe DeLuca uh, at then wasn't really known as a mob guy, and even you know, into the into the new millennium wasn't known as a mob guy. Uh, very low key, even though he was a character, uh, was known around Providence area as uh, uh, a guy that worked at a bakery and, and sang a, a, a jingle for pizza chips, uh, the original Italian bakery in Johnston. Um, it wasn't public knowledge that he was a member of the mafia until 2018, and he popped up as a defendant at, at the Salemi trial. I should, I apologize, popped up as a witness at the Salemi trial. Um, and Joe DeLuca testified, Bobby DeLuca testified that they were brought into the conspiracy by Salemi after they, uh, after Salemi had murdered DeSaro, and they were tasked with burying the body. Uh, the body went across state lines. Cadillac Frank brought the body himself uh, on the evening of May 10th uh, to a North Providence parking lot where he gave the body to Joe DeLuca, who was assigned to go um, pick it up from his brother. And Joe DeLuca uh, took the body, which was wrapped in a tarp. Cadillac Frank told him that be sure when you dump the body to get rid of the tarp because it's got a lot of fingerprints on it, including Cadillac Franks. Uh, 
So Joe DeLuca goes to a piece of property on Branch Avenue in Providence, uh, an old converted textile mill, which was owned by a guy named Billy Ricci, who was a member of uh, the, 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 the mob crew in, in Providence. And Billy Ricci was doing some construction in the back of the mill. And they went and Joe DeLuca dumped Stevie DeSaro's body there. Forgets to take the tarp as instructed by Salemi. Gets back to, to meet up with his brother. And his brother's like, you got to go back and get the, get the tarp. At some point in the next day or two, they go back, uh, retrieve the tarp and throw it away. And then nobody hears from Stevie DeSaro for, for, for another 25 years when Billy Ricci gets uh, jammed up in a drug case and he leads the feds to DeSaro's body. At this point, Bobby DeLuca's in witness protection. Cadillac Frank is in witness protection. He uh, flips uh, back in 1999, uh, helps them make some corruption uh cases against the FBI that were uh, operating Whitey Bulger and Stevie Fleming, but doesn't admit to any of the murders that he ordered or helped carry out uh, during his reign as boss between 1990 and 1996, comes back to bite him. Uh, they dig up the body and DeLuca and Salemi are in trouble because neither of them had given uh, information in their debriefings about their role in in the uh, the sorrow homicide, I speculate in both cases they were trying to protect someone. I think Salemi was trying to protect Bobby DeLuca because he was so close with Bobby DeLuca. Um, it's ironic that DeLuca is the one who eventually puts him away in prison on it when he testifies against him. And then DeLuca is trying to protect. In one case, he's trying to protect Salemi when he uh, debriefs in the two thousands, but. He's also trying to protect his, his brother. Um, Cadillac Frank, in theory, would be trying to protect his son, Frankie Boy, but Frankie Boy died of AIDS back in 1995, so he wasn't around to uh, have to answer. Uh, so Joe DeLuca was being protected by Bobby DeLuca, and, uh, and then it was the end of the line when they dug the sorrow up. Uh, both DeLuca brothers testified Joe DeLuca was kind of flippant when, when leaving the courthouse back in May of 18, Tim White approached him uh, and asked him for comment. And he, he kind of made a reference to the board game clue and said something like, Oh, the Butler did it. Um, probably not the best look uh, when you're, when you're talking about a family that lost, uh, lost a loved one like Stevie DeSaro. So uh We'll we'll see. We'll, we'll be keeping you updated uh, at the Original Gangsters podcast and at gangsterreport.com about what happens this week in Providence. Um, but the FBI uh, and the state police will be on high alert. They will be uh, uh, an aggressive um, in, an, in an aggressive formation or in a uh, showing up with with a heavy presence to send a uh, send word to everybody out in, in uh, Rhode Island that, uh, that that wakes and funerals are not to be disturbed and uh, you're, you're not going to mix business with family here, whether, you know, whatever, whatever beefs you have with Bobby DeLuca or even Joe DeLuca, uh, you know, this is a time for their families to mourn and, uh, you know, deal with it on your own time. So, uh, well, don't deal with it at all. I'm sure if you're, if you're the FBI, that's what you're saying. But uh, hopefully uh, it goes off without a hitch. We will see, only time will tell, um, Joe DeLuca dead at age 83. He died in Providence at a nursing home. Initially, it was reported that he died uh, in witness protection. He had gotten ushered into witness protection uh, in the months after he testified. He didn't, he didn't go in right when he testified. Uh, he went in about eight months later after one of Baby Shack Minocchio's uh, old uh, bodyguards, um, Napoleon Andrade, Andrade uh, was killed in the halfway house and uh, they pulled uh, Joe out of Providence and, and, and tucked him away for a while. At some point in the last couple of years, he's come back and went into a nursing home um, and, and died, I believe, of cancer. So 
again, Joe DeLuca dead at night at, at 80 at 83, one of the uh, last remaining OG Providence mob soldiers. Uh, we've been reporting on some uh, new blood coming into the family, but uh, from the Salemi era or the Baby Shacks era or even the Patriarcha era, uh, they're few and far between. We'll be back this week on, on the full uh, OG pod with Jimmy, my partner, Jimmy Bucciolato. Shout out to the doctor. Thank you, Ben, behind the glass. Scott Bernstein, OG pod out.